prophet greet our mother the prophet prophet in in honor of us again all stand and just clap for them in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ and appreciate Jesus for their lives team, executive team, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, amen. Um, the whole leadership, all workers in the house, the whole priesthood saints, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, some we're going to visit again, to Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 8, and that is where I aim to do, just to do a quick recap, and then we find our feet for today. My topic is still the same as yesterday, which is honor. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Ephesians chapter number 4, verses number 8. There is an army rising up. 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 There is an army. There is an army, there is an army. To break every chain. 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 Verse number eight. Whatsoever he saith, when he ascended on, up on high, he laid captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. It stands to reason, Barcelona, that's the method that Jesus Christ used when he ascended upon high to lead captivity captive was giving gifts unto men. Those gifts can be a form in a form of men. Those gifts can be interpreted or we can understand them also as ascension gifts. Hallelujah. These ascension, ascension gifts are given to men. And these men who carry these ascension gifts are gifts unto mankind. Hallelujah. These ascension gifts are given to men. And the men who carry these ascension gifts are a gift to mankind. Hallelujah. So this is the method of all things that Jesus could have done to put a final end to the rule of darkness upon the face of the earth. In order for him to gain or to regain ground, he gave his only life, his, his own life as a sacrifice, as a redeeming ransom but to finish off to complete the works of the Lord upon the face of the earth to restore and to restitute all things that were lost to the hand of the enemy by means of false he decided that he will use these gifts as part of his dealings with mankind to complete the work that he came to do. Amen. In the cross, the price was paid. But what we now see, what we begin to experience as a result of the price that was paid is a work of these gifts. Amen. 
these gifts are here to actualize, to practicalize what was begotten for us in the cross. Amen. So the message of the gospel is completed and perfected in these gifts. Verse number nine will say, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same. Verse number 10, also that ascended far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. In other words, his ascension, part of the work that was done, no man, part of the things that he achieved by his ascension is to fulfill all things. Now, verse number 11 and 12 and 13 makes us understand further what I'm talking about. And then the Bible says he gave some apostles, he gave some prophets, he gave some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Now this is the purpose why he gave these gifts unto men, and then he gave these people carrying this ascension gift to mankind. So that the work of the ministry can be, for, so that for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now the body of Christ is the physical presence of the Lord upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. The body of Christ is the physical. We cannot say Jesus Christ does anything upon the face of the earth lest we reference it to the body of Christ. Amen. In other words, Barcelona, whatever it is that the Lord intends to do upon the face of the earth, the tool with which he intends to do that by is his body. Because the body of Christ is the physical presence of the kingdom and of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Now for this body to be edified, for this body to receive, to reach its full potential, the tool that the Lord has decided to use is the tool of these ascension gifts. This body will not, this body will walk, will forever walk with a limp. This body will never amount to anything significant spiritually. This body can't achieve anything outside of it being strengthened by these gifts because that is what edifying means. Hallelujah. When we are talking about edifying, it means, it means to build up. It means building. It means edifying. It means it, it, it's a term that is Associated with the work of architects, architectural work, hallelujah, construction work. It means to build up, to strengthen. Now, for the Lord to be able to build up assuredly this body, he trusts or he has entrusted the, per no ma the ability, his ability to perfect this body has been entrusted upon, this, upon these gifts, hallelujah. And these gifts are upon men. And these men who carry these gifts are a gift to mankind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this is the main point, which is, this is going to be probably our scripture for tonight. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto a measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Verse number 14, number we can also read it. That we henceforth be no more children. In other words, that we grow. Hallelujah. Tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by slaying of men, by slight of men, and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. In other words, Basadwane, the kingdom of darkness thrives. No matter plans of the kingdom of darkness or the tactics of the devil are, they thrive. No matter the reason why we see them as if they are so prominent even in the house of the Lord is because of the lack of the functioning of these gifts. Hear me well, Pastor Juan. The evil that has overwhelmed the world to an extent that we even find it embedded in the culture of the, of the, of the church these days the reason that the devil and his kingdom is able to successfully achieve that is the absence of the functioning of these gifts. Hear me, Pastor Now, without these gifts, the body is feeble. 
Without these gifts, the body cannot be edified. Which means, which stands to reason, without these gifts, the body cannot reach its full potential. Oh, we are going somewhere tonight. The body cannot be what the body is supposed to be without the functioning of these gifts. The body is sick. The body is suffering. The body is suffocated because of the reason of these gifts not being functional. Hallelujah. But now, the trick to this whole thing is the gifts are not only functional by their effectiveness. They are also functional by, by no matter, they are only functional only to an extent of their reception. What I mean by that is the gifts will only work only as far as we are willing to accept them or to receive them to work. So the only people that are able to tank it or to limit the functioning of these gifts, it is us, Basaran. Hallelujah. In other words, these gifts are as effective as our reception. Jesus would go to say, a prophet is without honor in his own hometown. He says that to me, with everything invested in him, with all his diligence, both as a man, both as God, he cannot function beyond the expectation and the reception of his audience. That now does not seem to me, no matter what I how effective his ministry will be amongst us, how effective his works will be amongst us, will be determined by the, our willingness to receive. Because in that chapter, Jesus is trying to talk, no matter he's speaking about his reception, no matter how he was received. Hallelujah. So in other words, Barcelona, these gifts are given to mankind, but the, the men that carry these gifts are a gift to mankind. They are given to men, but the men that carry these gifts are a gift to the body. These gifts are given to us. In other words, Barcelona, both in the form of men and both in the form of us receiving the gifts themselves. Now, how effective these gifts can be determined is, 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 is laid upon us. Hallelujah. So, if we lack a culture, if we lack an understanding of these gifts, we won't see them functioning in our midst. This is why Paul chooses to use these words till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man in other words unto our perfection which he also talks about in chapter number 6 when he talks about the bride that is willing no matter he wants to present to himself a bride without wrinkle amen without any blemish or any such thing Hallelujah. That is the church that Jesus is looking to build. A church filled with all, no a church that express all the folds of his glory. But we, we cannot reach that state. The medium that the heavens has trusted for the body of Christ to reach that state is the gifts. Hallelujah. He could have trusted angels. He could have trusted any other medium, but he decided in his sovereignty to trust his gifts for the perfection of the saints. In other words, all our shortcomings as the body of Christ, as the church, hear me, Barcelona. All our shortcomings can all be traced down to our reception of these gifts. When we trivialize these gifts, we are trivializing our own edification as this is why 
individuals can mature spiritually and are maturing. But when it comes to the body of Christ, this is very sensitive. There has not been much growth. I'm saying to you, Barcelona, we, have, we, we can trace, we can tell, there, are, there is a lot of evidence on ground that attests to the fact that individuals are growing spiritually. But when it comes to that body of Christ, we can see that the body of Christ is growing backwards. And the reason for this, especially in South Africa, is our lack of identification, no matter of, of identifying our lack of our, uh, our lack we lack the ability to identify and relate with the ascension gifts accordingly one of the things that the, the moves the move of the false prophets that the body of Christ is coming from successfully achieved was to trivialize gifts it is it is so common now to find a group of people ridiculing a man or a woman of God everywhere, even on social media. What made those things possible was this move I'm talking about. Because they took things to the extreme and they brought all manner of falsehood. And when people spotted that falsehood, when people began to spot that falsehood, and there were results that showed that indeed this is falsehood, and then a door was opened for the body of Christ to be defected. Do you know how many people fell away because of that? How many people died, went backwards? Because of exposure to all those things. The body of Christ. I was, I was part of an evangelism team. 2017, 2016, 2017, 2018, in duty. What we found is that because we would preach, we would, we would preach and win souls like Angazbazalan. Hallelujah. So as we were preaching with people, what I discovered is that, and what we discovered from our findings, is that in five people that you will preach to, at least three of them has, at some point in their life, has received Jesus as their savior. I'm talking about evidence from, from, from practical evidence, hallelujah, from experience. People that you will preach to, and then when you reach the point whereby you need to make normal, they need to get to a point where they receive Jesus or not, they will tell you that in high school, a preacher came, I received Jesus as my Lord and savior. A church, my mother took me to church. I received the orders. Many people have received, no matter, are exposed to the gospel, especially in our country. Hallelujah. The, the, the only thing that has been lacking is, is to embed the culture of living Christ like it is to disciple them until they are true disciples of Jesus Christ. That is, that is the part that is lacking. I'm saying that to make you understand, do you our, the, because of us neglecting the gifts, we, the, the body of Christ has lost so much. Hallelujah. We have lost so much because of how we have not been able to recognize these gifts. Hallelujah. So now if there is no edification, it stands to reason, there is loss, there is loss, there is there is. There is there is, there, is, there is, obviously, there is many things that are not functioning the way that they should function in the body of Christ because of lack of these gifts. Now, it is evident, Basalwane, Uguti, God still has men on ground. And it is evident that the problem is not with the presence of the gifts. We are not, there are many prophets, Konabanye. We, we, there are many prophets out there. There are many apostles out there. There are many pastors, evangelists, teachers. The gifts are there. But the genuine ones are not recognized the way or received the way they are supposed to be received. The Bible says, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. Now, when Jesus says those words, there is something very specific that he's trying to address there. 
that the prophet can be damned and the prophet's reward can be damned. But what can be a hindrance between you and the prophet's reward is your reception. Amen. Or what could be a stepping stone towards the prophets? Because there is no prophet without a reward. A man, if there is if there is one thing that the Lord does is He will give you your reward with your calling. When when a man is called, he is given his reward with his calling. Hallelujah. So there is no prophet without a reward. Trust me. If the prophet really is from God, in other words, if a servant really is called of God, whether you see it or you don't, it's there. Hallelujah. Even, even if they themselves don't see it, but it is there. It all depends on reception. Hallelujah. Let us read Acts chapter number nine. I'm gonna get okay. Start the corner so was would secret the end of it. What the Lord intends to do is now the prophet's reward that Jesus is talking about, it is what he uses to edify the body. Hallelujah. That is that is what he is interested in. He gives him the reward, not for him, but for everybody that is put. Or that is part of their calling. Mention everybody that is supposed to benefit from what the Lord has placed upon their lives. If there is a crisis amongst us, what the Lord will do is He will call someone with a solution to that crisis. And everyone who can identify and connect with that person that the Lord has called to solve that crisis, automatically that crisis becomes solved. Hallelujah. Or Eshane, hallelujah. That technology the Lord used or employed to save the children of Israel from the apparent snakes that were around them. Hallelujah. Then the Lord will not now, he won't waste resources by trying to deal with each and every one. He will find someone with a willing heart. Then he can elevate so high that it will become a solution for many. He gave his life for many to be saved. It's been the same. Hallelujah. So now, when God wants to deal with a generation, he will call someone. And in whatever aspect that the Lord wants to deal with that generation, he will give that person as a reward. So that whoever receives them and, know, and, and understands them and receives them as of God. Hallelujah. They then begin to partake in that, in, in, in that reward. Thus, the Lord solving the problem or the issue of the generation. What I'm saying is so sensitive, Basalat. Okay. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, yes, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues. That if he found any of this way, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there, were, there shined around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Now the story goes, Basalan, and it continues. We can, we can read Nasemakaya. Here, Paul, in his understanding, he was defending the gospel. Hallelujah. No, in his understanding, he was defending Judaism, Obu Judah. Hallelujah. In his understanding, he was doing what was right because even the way he executed it, he wanted to go and get permission officially to arrest everybody who is following this so-called new move uh, of people that are following Jesus Christ who apparently died and rose on the dead day, which is wrong according to their perspe perspective. Hallelujah. 
Now, the Bible says, as he was going about doing that, then the Lord met him. I'm trying to show you the importance of the importance of the gifts which are men unto mankind. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as in his own right, he was on his way to do what he knows as being right or, 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 or as, uh, what he sees as righteous. The Bible says, then a light shone upon him and then a voice began to speak to him. And the voice blatantly says, why are you persecuting me? Hallelujah. Why are you persecuting me? Now, the Bible is very clear in making us understand that when it says, it is clear, it was God speaking to Saul here. God is speaking to, they are already meeting physically. Hallelujah. They are already physically meeting. In other words, Paul are calling here, are I too long by inspiration? Are I too long by the by, by the reading of the books? Hallelujah! Or he was not inspired, or he was not prophesied by another. The Lord Jesus came directly to him to speak to him. At the point of the beginning of his calling, in other words, any of the person that I want us to note here is that, relatively speaking, Saul was a sinner. Hallelujah. According to, according to things pertaining to the gospel, we can say there was nothing that attracted such a heavy encounter. Hey, some of us pray. Amen. There are people who really pray who will work for these kind of encounters and they will go their whole lives without having such an encounter. Dedicated, praying, fasting, holy live, everything, everything about their lives says a divine encounter should be attracted to them, but it doesn't. Amen. But here is this man going about his way. God begins to meet him. God begins to meet him face to face. Now, what is, what is, what is, what is striking to me here is that, firstly, is that Paul, he was told at that time, Saul understands that the one who is talking to him is the Lord. And then now, when the Lord began to speak to him, in verse number 6, can you open verse number 6? When the Lord began to speak to him, he says something very confusing here. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said to him, in other words, he was, the encounter was so divine, and it was so, it was so tangible that he understood that he's being given a new assignment. Without him being, without there being anyone explaining to him. That is what encounters are like. When you are in a certain atmosphere, there are things you begin to know. Hallelujah. There are things you begin to realize without any form of communication. The, envi the intensity of the environment will educate you. And then he says, the Lord says to him, arise and go to the city. And this shall be told to thee what thou must do. Now, I have a very big question here. Why, 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 why will it be told to me? Why can't, you just, why can't the Lord just tell him there and then? Because he is already telling him what to do. Why can't he just unfold his assignment? The reason for that is that he gave gifts unto men. The reason for that is because... He gave gifts unto men. Now, the perfecting of the saints is given as gifts unto men. The perfection of some is dependent on apostles. The perfection of some is dependent on prophets. The perfection of some is dependent on evangelists. The perfection of some is dependent on pastors. And the perfection of some is dependent on teachers. Now what I'm saying, you might say it is theoretically incorrect. I do agree with you. But what I'm trying to make you understand here is the role of each and every office in the perfecting of the saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because in actual fact, these gifts need to coexist. 
so that the whole manifest glory of the Lord can be manifested or can be displayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But this is the reason why the Lord did not finish speaking to him. As you continue to read, you will find out that he went there and then the Lord spoke, began to speak to that man that, 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 that Paul was supposed to meet, which, which was Ananias. And then the Bible says, in verse number 13, Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many men that how much evil he has done. He's talking about Paul, about Saul here, to the saints in Jerusalem. And here yeah, he had authority the chief, from the chief priest to bind all that call upon your name. And the Lord says to him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Hey. So now, Paul's calling is so specific and it is so it is so it is so obvious that Paul is called for great things the Bible says he says he's the he's my chosen vessel and then the Lord says to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel in other words Paul is so crucial in the advancement of the gospel and Paul I have met face to face but still, Paul, I couldn't talk to him. Consent, I couldn't perfect him. I couldn't perfect him. The reason why I couldn't perfect him is because he needs the gift upon you, Ananias. He needs the gift upon Peter. He needs the gift upon John. He needs the gift upon James. He needs those gifts so that he can be, he himself can be perfected to a point where Paul can boldly stand and say, these gifts are for the perfecting of the saints until we all come to the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God. But this man with this heavy revelation also needed the gifts. They some I'm going by the Lord. So this man could not reach the point where he can say, we need to come to the knowledge of God. But him saying that, to the knowledge of the Son of God, but him saying that he implies that these things have been revealed to him and we all need to be partakers of them but with all that calling with all those with all that peculiarity the lord still could not communicate he still needed the gifts to perfect him he still needed the gifts to perfect him another thing that another crucial role the Bible says in verse number 17, And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands upon him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared upon you in the way as thou camest, he has sent me that thou might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now the Bible says, Immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight for with and arose and was baptized. Paul met Jesus face to face. We can also say Paul met God the Father face to face. We can also say Paul met the Holy Spirit face to face. But for him to receive, to be baptized by the Holy Spirit, he still needed a gift. He still needed a gift. I'm laboring so hard, Barcelona, to say this one thing so that you all understand how crucial these things are. Honor is a, an element by which we receive the gifts. Honor is a hand that you use to receive these gifts. And by receiving these gifts, you therefore receive their reward. Honor is a hand we use to receive these gifts. Now, what the devil has done successfully in the body of Christ in the last days is, he has allowed the gifts to be there. But for no one, so, but, but even though the gifts are there, no one is receiving their rewards. The gifts are existent. The gifts are glorious. The gifts are peculiar. The gifts are, are, are in all ways manifesting the manifest glory of the Lord. But there is no hand to take. There is no hand. There is no hand. There is no. There is. There is a, a people to whom these gifts have been given to lack the tools, lack the hands by to, no more, no more by which they can receive 
the rewards from these gifts. When they see prophets, they still see men. You will see these days people saying, why is this man not going to work trivializing gifts? Why is this man depending on the church to fund his lifestyle? Why is it? You, all those questions are a sign of a lack of hands to receive the gifts. And this is why the body of Christ has prophets. But the body of Christ is lacking the prophet's reward. Hi, Masalwan. We have apostles in our midst, but apostles' rewards are lacking. This is where the body, this is why the body is stagnant. And the body of Christ is not growing. The devil has allowed us to see the nakedness of the gifts enough so that we can trivialize them. So that you can put them in the hall in one sheepfold and say these men are like this. These men are so and so. These men do such and such to a point where we trivialize even sensitive spiritual matters. There are things that the Lord wants to do and he won't consult our emotions. He won't consult how we feel about church culture. He won't consult how we feel about certain men. He will do them anyway. If God could call a murderer, because what you need to understand, Masaran, is that in being chapters before this, this man was heading ahead of people that killed one of the key functionaries in the company of the apostles. But chapters later, this man is being called. This is why we have no say. Our emotions play no part in what the Lord in his sovereignty decides to do. He gave gifts unto men. And by these gifts, he led captivity captive. The reason why captivity is so rampant upon, upon, amongst us, the reason why the, the, it seems like the devil has been let loose amongst us is our lack of the reception of the gifts. We have prophets, but the prophet's reward is not evident amongst us. We, have, we are a group of people led by a but the apostolic spirit is not found in us. All the, all the, the coordinates that you need to set straight tonight. The coordinates that need to be set straight in the body of Christ. It might happen that you went to the same school as a certain prophet or as a certain gift of no, no, as a certain gift in the body of Christ. But it does not mean that you are the same. You might have grown up with them. They, are, they might be your siblings. They might be your cousins. They might be people that you grew up with in your neighborhood. You know their nakedness. It might have happened that the, the, the devil has exposed certain weaknesses that they carry before your eyes. It still does not negate the fact that he can give to man. I am a tohale. I am a tohale. Whether they straighten their path or they don't, it is out of our hands. It is their dealings with the Lord. It still does not change the fact that they are a gift to the body. And if the body is to be perfected, it is by the working of the gifts. Lord, captivity captive. I was wondering, I was wondering. It was bothering me. There was a generation that walked in so much power, that walked in so much authority. Healing, I, I was part of a, a people where healing became common. Healing became common, became common. Healing, it became common. Nowadays, you rarely see such things. The reason is not because the gifts are lacking or the prophets are no longer prophets. But there is nobody that is there to receive the prophet in the name of a prophet so that we can receive their reward. When a prophet mocks us, we take his hairstyle, we take his dress coat, we take his mannerism, we take all these meaningless and futile things. We end up losing on the I'm speaking tonight. We end up losing on the prophet's reward because we are too busy. Calculating, correcting, while well, we, we, we try to we try to find faults, even when there is no, we try to see if this is the being done correctly. Our emotions are overriding us. We won't see the reward. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, out of Egypt, 
the people of Sledama, he by the hand of a prophet, he led them out of Egypt. And by the pillar hand of the prophet, he sustained them. Ay, 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 ay. I were a generation man in the theology. Even our believers now have degrees in theology. They all have strong concordances. They all have strong dictionary. When they are trying to bring meaning of a word, they try to correct you. To say, no, 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 that's not the accurate Greek. That's not the Hebrew. There's no Greek in that chapter. That chapter is Aramaic. We, we, we are very knowledgeable, but we like the prophet's reward. Because, Baba Zalwan, we do not, we fail to receive. Come on, go. We fail to receive these gifts. I want to share with you. I want to share with you and open your eyes. Why is it still early? There are things that you should decide to ignore. Not to say they are not fault in your eyes. We are not denying you an opportunity to, 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 to judge wrong or right. But you should see when it is there to truncate the move of God upon your life. Hi, hi. Hi, Barcelona. You know when I came, when I came here, when I came to this ministry, I came here broken. I came here discontented. You know when the Bible ex explains, talks about mighty men, before the mighty men, the men that went into the cave of Adulam, it, it, it speaks everything concerning my life. I never thought I will ever address people again. I will never ever ever minister again in my life. But when I came here, I met with divine energy. I met with divine energy in a sense that I've never seen before. I found myself. There are things that I believed in. I thought I was crazy. I thought I was the only one. When I came here, I found a sense of belonging. The Lord began to reveal to me even greater things about my path. Because he gave gifts to men for the perfecting of the saints. By no means am I trying to insinuate that I have it all together. No, 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 no. But there is somewhere we are going. Eh? There is somewhere we are going. And this is indeed the church of Jesus Christ that will see and will taste the powers of the world to come. There are deep things in the spirit that the Lord wants to do, but we are too busy on trivial matters. That I did one twenty. Somebody is not an umpire. I am living Barcelona. I'm here to tell you there are more meaningful matters at hand. And what the Lord wants to do these days, what the Lord wants to do in our days, will require us to receive prophets. In the name of, because we are, the Lord wants to release the reward of the prophet upon us. When we begin, when we get to a point where we talk about mentals, we talk about mentals of the, of the, of the church triumphant, being transcended to the church militant. When we begin to talk about the manifestation of the spirit of Elijah, the manifestation or the, or the manifestation of the spirit of David one will be a little amongst us become like a thousand and a small one a nation when we will begin to explore all those possibilities while we are still busy with futile matters when we receive gifts we allow the Lord to usher us into perfection People will think you crazy oftentimes. People will think you are too churchy. You go to church a lot. Why don't you rest? Why will you take church things too serious? The season demands that we change our attitude. We need to restore honor in the body of Christ. We need to be exemplary in honor. We need to exalt. No more. We need to change our minds and we need to restore honor. Because what we are fighting for is the prophet's reward. That's what we are fighting for. We, it, is the, it, it transcends money. It transcends feelings. It transcends emotional well-being. I'm not saying your emotional well-being is not important. No. You should be emotionally well. You should be psychologically well. You should not expose yourself to abuse. I'm, not, I'm, by, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm in no way trying to insinuate that you should be abused. But I'm saying you should, your eyes should be fixed on something greater. The prophet's rewards. 
That is why we want to receive a prophet in the name of the prophet. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 4, verse number 13. Let us read the scripture and then we will pray. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and to a measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. If we fail to receive gifts, if we fail to honor gifts, we will not taste our perfection. We will not taste the stature of the fullness of Christ. That means everything that Christ paid for in the cross will be evident practically amongst us. Everything that Christ is, we will become. But as the body of Christ, if we lack honor and we lack an ability to receive gifts accurately, we will not see such things becoming a reality amongst us. The Lord wants to heal. The Lord wants to deliver. The Lord wants to raise the dead. The Lord wants to open the eyes of the blind. That is a reward of the prophet. We will not partake of such realities if, if we are still trapped in trivial matters. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He gave gifts unto men. And by those gifts, he led captivity captive. Now, the church of Jesus Christ is under bondage. The church of Jesus Christ is under siege. The church of Jesus Christ is under attack. And the only way out is the gifts. And by gifts, we don't mean their presence. We mean our reception of their presence. If we don't change our mindsets towards the gifts. Because these things, these things, was around the world will try to manufacture, you know, to, to manipulate you to think that it's just preaching. It's just going to church. It's just a religion. It's just, it's just opening a Bible and speaking and motivating you so that you can be motivated that you will get your money or you will, you will get your car. That's how that, that's how, that, is, that is the danger of materialism. You will miss such things. When will you become, when will you reach a point where we can say, this is a perfect man. This is a matured. Ah, let you buy building a matota. A scone desire. Listen, let you see this figure of daughter no peleleo. When we will reach a point where we can say, we have reached the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Everything about us displays Christ. Everything about every aspect of our life, glorious. Because what we we then begin to do, we then begin to fool people and ourselves by showing the glorious part of our lives and hiding the rest. So as, as so to men, no, as so to show up as perfect people. Meanwhile, we know we are nowhere close to perfection. And the perfection is our portion. Every aspect of your life should sing glory to the Lord. But that, that you see, you see, Pastor, why we need to be taught certain things. Because that is all that is only hinging on our honor. We want, these gifts will be there, but we won't receive from them what we are supposed to receive from them if we lack honor. All things need to be set straight again. Can we all stand up? I want us to pray. Ah.
when I was preparing this series, when I was told I have to come teach, I asked to be given time to prepare. The reason for that is because immediately in my spirit and around those days, a being super, ugubona, a gap between our parents and us as the believers of this house. I do believe the Lord wants to bridge that gap. I do believe some of us here are due for our upgrade in the spirit. We, we, the graces upon our parents are too vast and too great. And sometimes they will come with something so big and will come and present it to people with an expectation so small that it becomes trivialized. You can bring a 20 liter container, but if, if, if the container that you're trying to pour to is only 500 mils or one liter, only one liter will be retained. And the Lord wants to stretch our capacity and the Lord wants to stretch us to a point where we begin to command result in a way that we have never experienced before. Oh, Basalan, I'll get time some other day and testify. Hey, Basalan, what the Lord wants to do is so specific and so clear, especially upon this house. Indeed, a little one, a little one, a little one. Even our smaller will be as strong as David, each and every one of us. And each and every one of us will become like a nation. That is our ordination. That is our calling. That is who we are. But if we lack honor, we won't receive of those realities. And I do feel the mental of our parents needs to rest upon this house. It needs to rest even upon our personal lives until we combine serious results. But we need to change our hearts. We need to change even our perspective of them. How we look at them needs to change. The Lord wants to do something great, Barcelona. The Lord wants to do something great. The Lord wants to do something so great. But it will be hindered by our lack of honor. I want us to open our hearts and pray that may you have mercy. May you have mercy. May you have mercy. May you help me honor once again. May you restore honor in my heart for the gifts that you have given to me, O Holy Ghost, for my perfection, for my edification, so that I reach a point or a stature of the fullness of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, Katapala yana, te kunai. Ato pala rekete ya aso tai kana. Utepele reni hasi hekete pele reni hasi. Kamo tapala rita hako tetele ene ni aso. Pato rakato pala ria hasi te. Pato karita lo hati here ni hasi. Ato pele re here re te totare akotara tare. Pare te kuna rate te pere tere. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands and pray. May you all just begin to pray in the name of Jesus and ask for His mercy that honor may be restored in our hearts. May we not just honor when we are in front of our parents. May we not just honor when we are in front of our leaders. But let our honor be evident even in their absence. Everywhere we are, everything about us, let us be willing to receive and honor the gifts that the Lord has given to us. That the Lord has given to South Africa. That the Lord has given to Africa and the whole world. In the name of Jesus. Come out there, just, just open your mouth and begin to pray. And begin to pray asking for mercy. 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 Like the woman at the well who lacked Homa to Pale, Hato Halai, Hate. He brought all the containers to take or to drink of the well of Jacob. But she lacked 
a container to drink from the well of life, from the well that gives everlasting life. Come on, the palare has it. Akotai, Hatela, Atapale, Regate, Atatora, the Kamai, Atepele, Regatare, Ato, Tara, Tapara, Ukate, the Hane, Haria, Utara, Kutare, Pato, Karen, Atopa, Atora, Takare, Tara, Tapare, Takai, Umasete, Ato, Palare, Hesse, come on, somebody. Open your mouth and pray. Hey, Yamato. I could tell Palaya. Atare has so cut Itakuna has said, There is something specific tonight that is in your spirit. You need to open your mouth. You need to exercise your spirit until you touch it. Come on, Tapare. There is something special for you tonight, but it is dependent upon you stretching yourself to touch. And to that which you have touched, that which you have had. Come on, the pale, hara te kurai, ato pan te kare, tato la hate kanari hatai, ato tele ne hese, tapo ra keta kane, ato pele re kete, ato pan te kare, tato pala ra katare, ato ra kamani hase, uta pera hani hai, uma te pere te kare, ute ra hara te kuratai, ato pala re kato, tete pele re kato, ate pele re ma hate, uta pare ra kutare. The Lord wants to perform miracles in our midst. Kuma te pare te kare te pele re ni ni ahase. Tapo kate te re te pere te keri nai. Ato bahare he te he re neya. But we lack an expectant heart. We lack an expectant heart to receive prophets in the name of the prophets. Kuma to pare, kato pare kare, ato kare taro, ato paka tare. Komate palai, komate pele rehene, komaya kate pele re, komate pele re katara jahalai, kuku tu pala re teke re te pele ne ni ahasete, kaku ta pala re kate ke re ne te te ne ni anama ate, kuku ma to pala re te kare te pele re te kadi ni ahase, pala re kato harama ya ahase may you help me all my once again. May I have an honor in my heart. May I receive the gifts that you have given to me. Kuma te pele hele. With all on and trembly. Kamo te pala reke te pele re ne ahase. Ka te pala reke te here ne ne ahaso. Ato pala rika te re tato. Ate kato tala re hele. Utai until I begin to touch. Until I begin to handle. Kuma te pala hate. Ate te re hete kuna rita pare. Come high, Katai. Kuna te pelai. Kuma te pele re hai. Kuta pele re hete. Akuta halana hatakai. Uka no hete pele hene katoi. Uka te pele here ni ahase. Ato pa katai ate kunai. A prophet's reward is in our midst. A prophet's reward is in our midst. Come on, ta. Ate pare. Ato tale. Akuta pare te. Ata to kanare. Ato pele ria. Kuma te parato.
Believe me, was a learning. Seasons have really changed. Seasons have truly shifted. And things have truly changed. Even those who will listen to this message later, if there's one thing to take away from this teaching, is the fact that seasons have shifted and things have really changed in the spirit. Progressively so. And the Lord really is waiting on us to start doing wonderful and marvelous things in our midst. This place is a well already. But let not by any mistake, by any chance, that people that only associate with this place, that don't belong really here as family members, come and benefit from this well while we have not drank from it. Let it be far from us, Masalwane, that people will come and be blessed by this well while we have not been blessed by it, while we have not received from it. As we should. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord, the Lord really is doing really amazing and peculiar things. And it is really dependent on our perception of the whole thing that is happening here. If you are going to trivialize spiritual things, Master Lord, you are really going to miss out. If this is still church, if it's still about attending according to convenience, still doing things according to convenience, if really your eyes, the scales from your eyes, like Paul, hasn't failed for you to begin to perceive things that they, as they are, you will miss out and you will lose out. Hallelujah. 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 Don't take anything lightly. Don't take anything lightly. Hallelujah. All th <clears throat> things that are happening now are happening for our alignment. Hallelujah. So that you become aligned, so that you begin to be strengthened to carry the glory that is about to hit this house. I tell you, I do not lie. A heavy mantle is laying upon us. But we, we need to have our honor in our hearts so that we can really exhaust and fully maximize the grace that has been given to us. And that not, Masalana, we all come and give our thanksgiving offering. Come and ligat Jesus Christ as a Nazareth. Before we all pray to go home. Thank you, Jesus. Ask Pastor Kumalo to come and just pray for us and bless the service for us in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Can we all pray that way? 